In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Well, uh, today, Father Albert is on his way to uh, a conference uh, to help him prepare himself to be a spiritual director, which is a kind of a specialized uh, role in the church. He's, uh, he wants to be a good guide for other people and uh, a good companion for them on their pilgrimage in life. And so he's gonna spend the week there uh, coming back on Friday. Um, so I invite you with me to lift him up in prayer during this week and uh, uh, to ask God to bless him uh, in this undertaking. Repentance is the word that we uh, used at the beginning of Lent to uh, Jesus said repent and believe in the good news and um, that same word is all through today's scriptures and uh, something in me says oh no not again <laughs> but repentance um, has gotten kind of a bad name it seems to us like it's um, scolding, but it's an invitation. Repentance is an invitation to the newness of life that Jesus invites us to. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouths of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Our response to the Lord's word is, Lord, let your face shine on us. Oh. 
the Lord will hear me whenever I call him. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lift up the light of your face on us, O oh Lord. You have put into my heart a greater joy. from the first letter of St. John. My children, I'm writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. His expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. And while they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? Why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he said, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord.
Peter said to the people, you denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. I know that you, asked, you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did, but God has brought to fulfillment in this way what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Therefore, repent. My children, I'm writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins. And not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. Expiation. Redemption. He is redemption for our sins. He is the price of redeeming us from our sins. Thus it is written, he said to them, that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem and reaching all the way to parchment. Uh huh. Okay. Just for the heck of it, how many of you were baptized as infants? A good number of us. Well, whenever we were baptized, <clears throat> the invisible grace of the sacrament could not be detected by those who were present for the event. There was nothing to see or hear, nothing to taste or smell that would indicate the grace of the sacrament. But the grace of the sacrament of holy baptism began the transformation of the individual into a member, loving and beloved, of the communion of saints. By holy baptism, we became part of the communion of saints. And this is important because the, the movement of Christ in with regard to us is a unifying movement. The living body of Christ risen from death is what we have become and are becoming. This living body is the church. And in a way, the church is the goal of the transforming work of Christ. Jesus came into the world, the Gospel of John says, to gather into one all the scattered children of God. The church is the reality that binds all its members to Christ and so to one another, so that I belong to you and you belong to me and to one another. And not only in the present world, but also in the fullness of life that we call heaven. But while Jesus came to form us into one, one communion of faith in God and hope in his promises and love expressed in following his commandments. 
Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead specifically for you and for me. And by our baptism into him, he began the transformation of each of us into a deep and personal likeness to him. This likeness, the effect of the grace of baptism and of confirmation and of Holy Communion and of every other sacrament that we might have received, this likeness most gradually becomes visible as we gradually allow ourselves to be changed into his likeness. So what's happening within us, which is kind of invisible, nobody else can see what's going on in my mind and my heart, that begins to be expressed in the way we live, in the way we respond to the events of our life. Part of the likeness, I sort of think, unfortunately, is that we, like our Lord and Savior, must die in a way which is neither appealing nor painless. And before we die physically, most of us will spend quite a few years dying to a way of life uh, that comes very naturally to us. It's the way that we sort of think of when we think of Adam and Eve. Uh, well, yeah, I, I know that we're not supposed to have that fruit, uh, but Mr. Snake, you, you make it sound pretty good, so I think I'll have some of that. That's the natural way for us. Another aspect of the natural way is what I did for the first 50 years of my life, sort of assuming that it was my job in life to make myself happy. Not. Not only is it impossible, it's stupid. Really, because if I, if I was perfectly happy, what the heck would I need with you? But I do need you, and thank God you need me. Jesus' work in drawing me out of that, I will say, selfish focus into a loving and respecting, respectful communion of love. Gradually brings us together. And the dying that transformation requires is called repentance. A change of heart, a change of mind and a point of view that enables us to see for instance, that the peace of mutual respect is sweeter than the drama we sometimes prefer to stir up. This dying of repentance means quieting the insistence inside that urges us to cling to an old pattern, to keep smoking or drinking or bullying or gossiping instead of letting the way of Jesus work in us. The purpose of repentance, therefore, is not only about having our past sins forgiven, but about the transformation of our lives, of ourselves, of our way of thinking and talking our way of judging between right and wrong, between good and bad, between good and better, and learning to choose what is best. We must not be discouraged if as we get closer to Jesus there are more and more negative things 
for us to uh, eliminate from our lives and more positive avenues that we should develop into, we shouldn't let that discourage us because these challenges are clear signs that we are alive in Christ and getting to be more and more so. If we're not aware of our shortcomings, which has often been true of me, perhaps that's a time to ask for the help of our Lord, the help and the courage and the trust we need to die to ourselves and to live more and more fully in Him. Please join me in prayer here for a second or two. Lord Jesus, we lift up our hearts to you. We thank you for laying down your life that we might take it up. We thank you for involving us in dying and rising and coming even here into the communion that will be when perfect, heavenly. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Stay with us this day and forever.